What's up guys, how you all doing? I'm Paul the Tech Giant and today I'm going to be unboxing and setting up this Spark 3D SP1 3D printer. Now this 3D printer has kindly been sent over by box.co.uk but they've not only sent me that but some 3D printing filament as well and if you're new to the game the 3D printing filament is what the 3D prints are actually made out of. So if we take a look I've been sent over some various colours. So we've got filament in blue, we've got red, green, white, and also clear. So even if you have already got a 3D printer, go and check out box.co.uk for your 3D printing filament needs, or if you are new to the game, maybe a 3D printer. And I'll leave a link in the description to this particular model. Right, so let's crack on then. And uh, normally I say, let's take a look around the outside of the box. Really isn't much to see. So I've got my knife and let's get the box open. So upon opening up the box, we are presented with this notice, which says to select the correct input voltage to match your local mains. So lifting off the protective foam then, and we are presented with, well, uh, quite a few components. So it would seem that we actually have to build this ourselves, which to be honest, I don't think it's gonna be a deal breaker, because if you're the sort of person who's gonna buy a 3D printer, clearly you are creative anyway, and I think building it is gonna be part of the fun. So when it comes to putting it together, we do have this user manual just there and it does have all the instructions on how to construct it. Right, so let's see what we actually have in here then. So lifting out this first thing and, oh, we have the screen. And to be fair, that is a decent size for the price point of this 3D printer, bigger than I expected. Next up, and we have, uh, looks like a metal bracket there. Move into the back. And cool, I tell you what, that is pretty weighty, whatever that is. And uh, I'd say that is the piece that feeds the filament to the printing head. And then it looks like we have the actual base itself. So this is what the 3D prints will be made on. And uh, yeah, I think this is gonna be a little bit awkward getting this out. So yeah, there we go. So that is in one big piece there. We've got cables and all sorts. I think this is gonna be a great laugh putting this together. And this being the UK model, we do have the UK power supply there with the three pin plug. So that is the first layer done. And if we lift out that protective package in there and we have some more bits and bobs in the bottom there. So we've got a scraper there. Uh, looks like some sort of belt there and what looks like to be an SD card. So I'm hoping there's gonna be some 3D prints on there that we can test out. Various tools there, screws, a little packet of 3D filament, even though we've got a few boxes worth. So again, if you haven't bought any, you know you can just do a few experimental prints with that. Whatever that is, not got a clue. Some cable ties, another metal bracket, a bit of plastic there. I think that's gonna to be to put the 3D filament uh, reel on. Something else, I ain't got a clue what these bits are, but I'm pulling them out anyway. There we go. So uh, yeah, quite a lot of uh, components in there. Another bag of screws there. Looks like some sort of handle, so maybe you can carry this thing around for easy transportation. Guessing that might be one of the supports. And we have uh, some more there in the bottom. And then finally, this threaded rod. So there we go, that is all the components laid out there for you to see in more finer detail. Like I say, quite a few, and obviously the main base there. So we better crack on and get this thing put together. Okie dokie, we're approximately halfway through the construction of this 3D printer. And as you can see, it's really taken shape. Now I've not bothered going into fine details of the construction of this, because there's lots of little screws and things like that, and it may get a little bit boring. But all I can say is that so far it has been plain sailing. And the instructions have been nice and clear and easy to follow. Okie dokie, so we have now finally put this thing together. And to be fair, it was a lot quicker than I expected. So don't let it put you off the amount of components that come in the box. I'd say you're looking at anything from 30 to 40 minutes from start to finish. Right, so let's take a look at this 3D printer then. And if you are new to the 3D printing game, then it may look pretty daunting. But to be fair, it's all pretty basic stuff. So obviously we've got our screen set over to the right hand side there where we can control what goes on with the 3D print. Then we've got our bed. Now this is what the 3D prints will be printed on. And this can be taken off to remove the 3D prints, which we'll do in just a bit. 
Then we come down to the actual printing head itself. So this is the nozzle, which will heat up and eject out the actual filament, and that will then print onto the bed. Then we've got motors that move the uh, different axes, so up and down and left, right, and the bed backwards and forwards. So yeah, don't let all these cables put you off. Like I say, all pretty basic stuff. So again, got another motor just down there. And then if you look, we have these wheels. And uh, if we're getting a little bit closer there. Now these wheels are on all four corners and they are there so you can manually level the bed out so it's nice and flat. Right, just moving around and we can see where we feed through the filament and then that would go along this tube and then down to that printing nozzle. Moving up and we have the spool holder just up there and uh, apparently you can actually print off a different one and uh, mount it on the side as well. And also we have a carry handle so uh, yeah if you want to pick it up you can do so. Now also at the front we have this mini USB port and a micro SD card slot which will take the supplied 8 gigabyte card which does come preloaded with some test 3D prints. So you can get up and running pretty much straight away. Now one thing that you may be concerned about is just how much space this thing takes up because let's be honest you've got to put it somewhere. So I've got my trusty tape measure and we're going to take some measurements and see how big this thing is. So starting off with height, and we are looking at 24 and three quarter inches, or roughly 63 centimeters. Moving on to the depth, and we are looking at approximately 18 and three quarter inches, or 48 centimeters. But with that measurement, add an extra three inches on roughly for the cables at the back. Then finally, we come to the width, and that is approximately 18 and a quarter inches or 46 and a half centimeters. So I wouldn't say it takes up a massive amount of space, you know, I'd say it fit on a desk. And as you can see, we've easily got it fitted on this kitchen worktop. So what we're gonna do now is take a look at the display and get it set up and printing. So the first thing that we need to do is just head on round the back. And as you can see, we've got a switch there. So we're gonna simply turn that on. And there you go, you can hear it firing up into life. And as you can probably hear, we also have a fan going there. Obviously that is to keep things cool. So let's take a closer look at this screen then. And to be fair, it's uh, nice and bright. You know, we've uh, got quite a lot of daylight coming in through this window. And you know, it seems to be bright enough to handle those conditions. And uh, as you can see, we've got this control knob just here. Now it isn't touch screen, unfortunately, but it's easy enough to use. So you just uh, rotate it left or right. And uh, to press enter is simply you just push down on the button. Now, as you can see there, I've just gone into print and we've got some prints in here. Now, some are pre-installed and some we have downloaded ourselves because the supplied SD card does come with its own printing software. So you can create your own 3D prints of pretty much whatever you want. So let's go back on the menu then. So I'm gonna scroll up and then click on back. And then we've got our controls. So in here we can move things around. So the different axes there. So let me just give you a demonstration. I'm gonna click on enter. Let's go up to say 100 and press enter. And there we go, that will move it. So if you need to manipulate it around for whatever reason, you can do. Coming back out of that and moving down then, and we have some other options here, auto home, so on and so forth. So again, we can uh, do some preheating there if we need to. So yeah, it's uh, all pretty much self-explanatory stuff. And there at the bottom as well, we've got a cool down option. Uh, then we have our settings. So in here, again, we can adjust things like the uh, nozzle temperature, the bed temperature as well, fan speed. So yeah, it's uh, really, really in depth. So now what we're gonna do is actually get this thing set up for printing. So what I'm gonna do is get my son to come in and uh, start getting it all ready. So uh, got to go into the menus here and we're going to go to automatic load. Now this will tell us exactly what we need to do. This is how great the system is. You know, if you are new to this, you know, it's like a step-by-step -step guide. So please insert the filament through the feeding gear into the tube. Heating, please wait. And it gives us a diagram there of what we've got to do. So my son is now going to feed that filament through, pulling back on a spring, just pushing it through. 
There we go, that is like loaded up now and ready to go. So now we're just waiting for it to finish heating up and then that should automatically start feeding through that tube. It is now starting to feed through, as we can see just there. Looks like something's being sucked up a straw. And uh, if we see on the screen there, it says loading takes about one to two minutes. Please wait until the filament is out of the nozzle. So there we go, it's just coming to the end now. And there we go, we can see it now just coming out. So now what we're gonna do, we are gonna go to print, and I'm gonna scroll down and go to the Spark 3D test model. So I'm gonna simply now press enter, and hopefully it should get underway. There we go. We are off. Well, hey, we are 3D printing. Right, so we've now got an estimated time until it is complete, and that is just over two hours. But quite often, it's a little bit quicker than what it says. But if we take a look at the print, and it's already really coming along. So if we go in a little bit closer, you can see that design coming through there. And it is so detailed, it really is. So let's just listen to what sort of noise this thing produces when it is actually printing. So I'm just gonna be quiet and step back a little bit. So yes, you can hear the fan going there and you can hear it moving about, but it's not too bad. You know, if it was late at night, maybe you wouldn't want it running in your bedroom, but yeah, it's not massively intrusive. Okay, we are now just 33 minutes in, and it says we've got 20 minutes remaining. And yeah, it is coming along really nicely now. You can see it really starting to take shape. It's a bit awkward to film because obviously it's constantly moving around. Yeah, so far, so good. Okie dokie, we have now finished printing and that took about 40 minutes. So yeah, not too bad at all. So what we need to do now is actually remove the 3D print from the bed. So I'm just gonna get my son to uh, lift the bed off. As we can see there, we've got a magnetic bit that just pops off like that. And uh, there we go, it's just come off nice and easy. But this can be bent a bit as well. Uh, so it is flexible to ease taking off those 3D prints. So let's take a look at the finished product then. So obviously this is just a test piece to show what it's capable of. And there was a few wispy bits on there which are easily picked off. But yeah, look at the level of detail in that. I think that is really impressive. And you know, we've not really made any adjustments to it. This is pretty much out of the box. So for a test piece, I think that's really good. You can see the different sort of uh, layers there if you look closely. And just look at the level of detail also on this piece on the bottom there, that is mega. So, you know, nothing really bad going on. For a first go on that, I think that is great. So that was a nice piece to start off with, but I think we should do something now a little bit more interesting. Now, I'm not gonna tell you guys what this is. We'll see it printing out, see if you can guess what it is, and we'll have a play when it's done. So, let's get it up and running. And there we go. It is now printing away. Rightio, we are now just under one hour and a quarter into this mystery 3D print. And so far it is looking pretty tidy. I can't see any mistakes there just yet. As you can see, it's moving along pretty quick. But can you guess what it is yet? It's a bit hard to see, but uh, yeah, there's lots of detail to that. So hopefully when we check back in, it may give it away a little bit more. Fast forward in now and the mystery 3D print is now complete. Now we're all about honesty on this channel and you know what, I made a bit of a schoolboy error. We didn't take into account the amount of filament that we had on the spool, which wasn't enough. We had to resort to breaking out a new one and sadly, um, yeah, it seems to have messed up the print but this is a real world test at the end of the day. And if I just show you guys, we can see just there the difference between the two filaments. The top one there is what we originally had 
and the bottom one is the new one and you can see we have that little gap there in the middle where uh, yeah we basically tried to feed through the new one and it didn't really work out perfectly and I think we rushed it a little bit because uh, this side was looking all good and uh, we sped it up and yeah it didn't really come out the best at the end, which was a bit of a shame. And you know, this is all trial and error and part of the fun. And it would be wrong of me to say that, you know, every one of these prints turned out perfect because you will get ones that aren't exactly great. And that is just part and parcel of it. So the print itself then, as you can see, it is actually a box. So what we've got here is basically a spring, uh, some cogs and a lid up there, which I'm hoping when we uh, bring it down, should then spring back up when we release it. We've not actually tried it yet, so what I'm gonna do is hand it to my son, and uh, we're gonna see how it goes. There we go, so it's, there we go. So it has sort of cracked this because it was a slight join. Is it working? Uh, so we've we got a bit of a, a uh, bit of a fail on this end where it didn't print properly but you can see it should operate when it is printed properly so that should close and then that spring would then let that lid spring back up so if we uh, push it back down again we can see that spring working so yeah pretty clever if we were to have printed it properly which we didn't but like i said it's all part and parcel of the learning experience so there you have it then guys, that was the Spark 3D SP1 3D printer. So what are my thoughts on it? Well, to be fair, for the money, I think it's a really good buy. Now, the prints we've done, I think, again, the results are amazing, to be fair. That first one, I, well, I can't knock it at all. Second one, where it did print right, again, amazing. The fault with that, that was really just down to us. So I can't really knock the printer itself. The fact that you've got to put it together, I thought that may put some people off, but after doing it myself, I think it's actually a bonus thing because, you know, it is actually fun to construct it as so you get to figure out how it actually all works. I also like the fact we've got this nice big screen, easy to see and uh, yeah, just simple to use as well. So if you are a first time user of a 3D printer, I think this is a great buy. Now, if you do want to pick up one of these for yourselves, I'll put a link in the description. And uh, if you have enjoyed today's video, then please do us a favor and give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you already haven't. And hopefully, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye for now.